Okay, today we are going to be profiling the Israeli military industries IMI Uzi. This is a 9mm parabellum. It comes with 25 round magazines as well as 32 round magazines and also has 40 round magazines. Here goes nothing. It comes standard with the uh, folding stock on it. Um, it. It is a heavy beast. I will say that, you know, if you're thinking that this is going to be about as light as an AR, you're mistaking. Um, it is a great gun. They do come standard with the uh, bayonet lug right here. Why you'd put a bayonet on this is beyond me, but it is pretty cool to have it. The barrel, and I'm not going to take it apart, but for educational sake, the barrel, you push down on this pin, unscrew this barrel nut right here, barrel slide right out. So for those of you that have legal SBR stamps on here, you just drop in your um, SM, not an SMG barrel, but your 10-inch um, barrel, and then good to go. Uh, a couple of the differences that I definitely want to talk about because I know there is a lot of confusion on this subject. I've done extensive research on it and again don't take my word for it. Go over to the guys at UziTalk.com. They will be able to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but uh, the big difference that a lot of people ask is what's the difference between the Model A and the Model B? Now from what I understand just a little bit of history for you, the Model A was imported from 1980. It, appeared at the SHOT Show in 1980 and then they stopped importation of it because of the Model B it was the new model I believe in 1983 and in 1989 once the whole ban effect went in they stopped coming into the country. Um, again the biggest difference from what I could understand and again you know do your own research on this just to clarify but is the sights. The Model A sights came standard with something called the submachine gun sights which was calibrated for the 10 inch barrel. Um, these sights on the Model B were supposed to be quote unquote of an update and you have your windage on your rear knob right here which you do need a, a tool for unfortunately and then your front sight post right here does your elevation up and down. With the Model A what you have, you have no windage in the rear sight. All you have is flip up just like this for calibrated for 100 meters and 200 meters. But to do, to do the windage with the Model A, you actually have to twist your front sight post right here. Now, what that also does is it kind of rotates on, I would say, almost like a like an oval almost, because as you twist the sight, it will change your direction of impact, either left or right, but it will also change your elevation up or down. Now, is it really that big of a deal? No, but it can be a little bit of a pain in the rear end. Another thing that is a common misconception is that the Model A was easier to convert to full auto. <clears throat> From the research I've done, internally these guns are the exact same firearms. Period. End of story. Um, the only difference with this one is, is the bolt does have a firing pin safety on it. Now that doesn't hurt function, form, accuracy, etc, etc. You would never know that it's there. The reason why they put that in there was due to the fact that the Model A IMI could actually shoot a round that's not fully in the chamber. So I don't, I didn't find any um, information on this, but accordingly it was supposed, to, it could have called slam fires, etc, etc. And yeah, they're just excellent firearms. And um, another reason why the uh, Model A, if you guys, anybody's interested in purchasing one of these, will be a little bit more expensive was because they weren't imported with the same amount of numbers as the Model B. But because you have either a Model B or a Model A, um, it, it's pretty much the same gun. You guys will love it. I would highly, highly recommend it. Again, the bad things about it is the sights on it, I hate to say this, are terrible. But um, other than that, you know, there's tons of upgrades for it to say. You could actually get a Picatinny rail, a new top receiver cover right here, get a Picatinny rail, put a red dot on it. Um, because the barrel is incredibly easy to change, once you fill out your NFA tax stamp, it'd be a great, great SBR project, you know, especially if you live in a uh, free state. So 
Anyway, guys, great guns, and if you uh, have any questions or comments, just drop a line to Skitty Medic, and I'm sure he'll uh, get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.